My name's Adrian Arbib. I'm a photographer based in Jericho area. Um, and uh, you'll see here we're, we're on Port the Meadow, 440 acres of common land. It's a stunning piece of open pasture land. Uh, it's been continually grazed for uh, thousands of years. It is a spiritual lung for Oxford. Um, this massive green space in, within the ring road. Um, I can't think of many cities that have got such a space. Um, and it has the effect of giving a place for people to come and see a horizon and get some peace with nature. The fact that it is such a pristine environment is, uh, is a double-edged sword because um, what actually happens is that the um, luxury housing developers that have built, been built, um, they've got this land here, um, have actually got an added premium on the houses and they predicates that they put in higher value housing. You know, large, sort of jo mock Georgian, mock Victorian houses, sort of four bedrooms, which is really not what Oxford needs. What we actually need in the city is affordable housing and a lot more of it. Despite calls from the community in many quarters um, for 50% affordable housing, what has actually been put in has been probably about 14%. And consequently, what you, what you actually get is um, fairly kind of sterile um, communities here where you don't have any shops, um, uh, people sort of, it is effectively kind of gated communities. I'm sure in time things will develop, but the actual template put in um, has, hasn't been one that actually you know, provides community. I'm not having a go at the people that live in these developments. The issue is with the developers who are driven primarily by profit and consequently getting maximum bang for their, their bucks will build on any available site at the high, uh, and get the highest return on it. Um, I'd like to show you a place now which is uh, along the canal, which is a boatyard, uh, which is under threat of development and is a classic example of a place where we can get it right. Here we are on the canal. We haven't even got to the boatyard yet. Um, this is Lucy's um, a bit, a classic, beautiful example of Victorian uh, industrial architecture. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't have any uh, English heritage, haven't granted it any uh, uh, security status, and consequently, Berkeley Homes are going to level this place completely um, and turn it into luxury housing. Um, of course, uh, it doesn't take an awful lot of imagination to retain the outside walls and, uh, and build on the inside. Uh, but no, they're going to uh, knock the entire thing down because it's going to cost too much to keep the outside. I mean, this wouldn't be allowed to happen in London, but unfortunately in Oxford, somehow, um, it's got through. Why does it have to be entirely residential? You can have a mix of residential and workspaces. It creates an eclectic mix, changes the feel of the city, and you know, it changes the demographic of the city. But no imagination, entirely luxury development. Most of the people will be commuting to London. Here we are at Castle Mill Boatyard. It's the uh, only boatyard in the uh, Oxford, immediate Oxford area on the, on the Oxford Canal. Um, the alternative sites uh, up towards Banbury um, over a day's motoring by boat. And uh, the difference between this boatyard and other boatyards is that people are actually allowed to work on their own boat. So it's a community boatyard. Um, the other, other boatyards tend to be marinas where you have to employ someone to work on your boat. And without this boatyard, it's going to impact severely the hundred or so residential boat owners in Oxford, many of whom have said to me that they're actually going to you know, move out of the area. Bellway Homes and British Waterways, who own the site, um, want to build 46 residential units on this site. Basically what you'll be looking at is a wall of steel and glass, um, four storeys high, overshadowing the houses behind. And it's going to impact severely the whole character of the area. What actually can be done is that you can have a mix of residential and the boatyard. But no, they haven't even considered that. And the viable option to do that is there, but currently it's under appeal. We don't know what's going to happen. It's in the hands of the gods. So, so what I'd like to see in Oxford by 2015 is a more responsible approach to development, uh, development that includes communities, ask communities what they want, instead of templating uh, ridiculous schemes. So it's, it's easy for me to say this and to complain about it, but actually what, we, what the council is actually governed by is the, is the local plan, which is, comes down from central government. And these are things that were implemented 10 years ago that we're living with, the legacy of decisions made 10 years ago. Um, and, and, and we have to work with councillors um, 
as, and as communities together to try and make these changes. And it can be done, but and it's all very well to complain and whinge about this stuff. But if you get together, if we do get together as groups, we can make change. And uh, uh, it's, it's the only way. Otherwise, we're going to end up with um, you know, toy town everywhere. <laughs>